Um, let's see. You, did any of you catch the joke that Francois was uh, just making about Chris signing a laptop? Probably not, right? Not so, joke. what? It's not a joke. Well, it's not a joke, but let me just tell the story. We, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were at WWDC this, uh, what, a couple months ago, and um, someone actually asked Chris to sign their laptop, autograph it. Um, and uh, all of us were kidding Chris about that. Um, but um, I've been working at Apple for quite some time. I won't say how many years. I've hung out with all the big guys, and never uh, they, they've never been asked to sign a laptop, but Chris. <laughs> so I was just blown away. Anyway, Chris has really made it in the Apple community. So um, I'm Steve Naroff. That's my... Um, Coordinates, snaroff at apple.com. So, Clang. How many folks know what Clang is? I would imagine mostly everyone. Okay, great. So, um, it's actually not much of a C++ front end yet. It's, it's starting to be a C++ front end, but it's very much a C and Objective-C front end today. Certainly there are bugs, there are things that we're still working on, but it's quite capable and I'll be talking about that through, throughout the talk. Um, we want it to be a drop-in replacement for GCC. We understand that not only um, does most of Apple's code, or all of Apple's code compile with GCC, most of the world's C code compiles with GCC. Tremendous amount of it. So we can't deviate from GCC. We don't want to make uh, Clang adoption difficult for people. We want it to be very straightforward. So compatibility with GCC and the standards are very critical to us. And uh, that takes a lot of work, obviously. Um, it's also part of the open source LLVM project, same design um, point. Um, I'll be talking more about that later, but um, we're really excited to have Apple bless the open source. Last year when I was here um, speaking, it was not open sourced yet, and uh, now it is. And we have many great contributors across the globe, so it's very exciting. So let's look at a timeline. In June of 2006, uh, Chris gave birth to Clang. Um, and uh, he worked a lot on the core infrastructure, lexical analysis, pre-processing. Writing a C preprocessor is an extremely challenging thing, especially writing one that's efficient as the one Chris wrote. And uh, when I saw this work, I wanted to become a part of it, and I joined Chris in October of 2006, and I worked a lot on the C parsing, the semantic analysis, the abstract syntax trees, um, and since then I've worked on a lot of other stuff, and we can go into that later. Um, we, I spoke about this last year. Um, there were about 40 folks here, and we introduced Clang. And um, I focused on a different set of things that I'm going to focus on today. And uh, in July, Apple approved the open source. Um, and so from June of 2006 to July um, 07, a lot of interesting work was done, but it was still very much in, in an early stage. So last year, when I was giving examples, Clang could compile some of our headers, and we gave some benchmarks, but it wasn't compiling large source code bases. At the moment, it's compiling very large source code bases. Um, July, uh, July 07, again, uh, Apple approved that. Now, in June of 2008, we introduced it at our Worldwide Developer Conference. Hey, Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference um, is, uh, is, is a very big event, and typically, we only talk about shipping products. Getting Apple to approve us to talk about something that is in development, like Clang is, um, is extremely unusual. But Apple gave us the go ahead since it's in the open source and there's a lot of interesting work and we're very committed to it to talk about it. And I was actually blown away at how many people were enthusiastic about this. I really was. Um, I expected more pushback, like, oh, we don't want to switch compilers. Why would we switch compilers? You know, GCC is good enough. Please, leave us alone. <laughs> none of that. Almost none of that. Tremendous excitement around Clang and LLVM. So from July to June, these folks were the key contributors. Ted Kremenek has done heroic work on the static analyzer that he'll talk about later on. He's also contributed a tremendous amount to the core infrastructure, ASTs. Uh, Farah Borz Jahanian has worked on Objective-C along with me, done some incredible work. Devang's worked on the back end. Anders Carlson, who's here, has made many improvements. Eli Friedman's worked on the back end, 
Um, the back end is roughly 70 to 80 percent done. Um, still some work there. Argyris is someone who's working on the C++ front end for us. He's not able to be here. He works out of Greece, I believe. Um, and uh, that's sort of a, a far uh, commute uh, for him. So he didn't, he didn't um, come to the conference. David Chisnell has done the back end for the Objective-C GNU runtime. And Nate Begman has made various improvements. And there are other people. These are just the key contributors um, over the past year. And we hope in 2009 to have a native compiler for C and Objective-C that's fully functional. So that's the timeline. A lot, of, a lot of progress in two years. Really amazing. And when we first started this, I think some people thought we were crazy to try and be GCC compatible and somehow be a replacement for GCC because GCC has hundreds of man years of development. But we think with good architecture, the right people, um, we could actually pull this off and it's starting to look, look real. So our key motivations. Fast compilation. Um, this is something that we believe, on, unless you design it in from the beginning, it'll never be quite as great as you want it to be. So from the beginning, speed has been a goal. Another, another point on speed. We want the compiler that's working at the command line, so to speak. We call it sometimes a batch compiler. We want the batch compiler to be fast, but we also want to architect our objects and our frameworks so that we can make it fast when you're in an IDE, let's say, where you have more opportunities to cache things. And I'll talk more about that, that later. Expressive error diagnostics, I talked a lot about this last year. I'm not going to talk at all about it today because uh, Ted's actually going to do uh, a talk on static analysis and bug finding, which will cover, cover this aspect. And what I am going to talk a lot about today is the foundation for new programming tools, right? Um, so we want to spur, uh, spur um, innovation. In the C compiler realm, most of these compilers have been built, were built in, let's say, the, the 80s and 90s. And the primary goal there was, how do we generate really good code? That's what the focus was. Writing static analysis tools, writing refactoring tools. There's a lot of other things that people want to do with front ends that these parsers were not um, interested in at the time, really. And in fact, retrofitting is really hard. So. We want to make sure our architecture accommodates um, a lot of the features that I have listed there. I want to talk a little bit, bit about what I mean by progressive. Um, you know, um, in some compiler communities,